The following video features excerpts taken from six recorded live lessons on painting with water mixable oil paint. To learn how you can access this complete lesson series, as well as the other recorded live lessons, video courses, ebooks, lesson plans, and more, visit thevirtualinstructor.com forward slash members today. I'm going to use just a little bit of water here to begin with, and I'm going to pull out a little bit of the Prussian blue and a little bit of the burnt umber and let them mix in the middle. And that's just going to create a dark value for us to work with. Okay, just and I'm going to try to paint a loose version of the contour lines. And we don't have to worry that this is these marks are dark right now. That's not something that we have to worry about because we're going to go over the top of this with color applications. All right, I'm going to go ahead next and kind of get an idea of where the shadow is going to be. And of course, all this can change. This is just a very loose sketch, basically. We all have different styles and we all paint and draw in different ways and there are multiple rights. That is one of the things that appealed to me about art in the first place. We really got some opportunities to do some cool stuff with those. So I'm basically just trying to figure out where they go into the tomato. Uh, you know, for example, on this tomato, it's close to the top. On this one, it's kind of upper middle. On this one, it's closer to the middle. And on this one, it's the upper middle. So um, that's really what I'm paying most attention to. And then just pulling some stems off. And then I'm just going to start adding color to our first tomato. Right up here. And I'm not going to really worry about the value changes or anything right now. I'm just going to worry about getting this color in place. And then once I've got the color in place, then I'll start adjusting the value. Let's go ahead and start lightening up this edge right here because we've got much lighter value that should exist here. All right, so the color that you get when you mix the titanium white with the cadmium red is clearly a pink, and it is clearly too pinky. Uh, so we need to add a little bit of, let's add a little bit of yellow ochre here uh, to try to tone it down just a little bit. We don't want it to be quite so pink. We want it to feel a little bit more natural, so. A little bit of yellow ochre in there. That might be a little bit better. All right, let's go right along the edge here. And start lightening that up. So as we're slowly building up these lighter values, it doesn't mean that we can't go back and push some of the darker values again. So uh, we're likely going to have to do that. And speaking of other colors, I've mixed a bit of the Prussian blue and the burnt umber to create a darker value. And I've mixed that with a little bit of our red. And then I'm just trying to paint the shape of the shadow that I see. And I'm, I kind of started in the area where the shadow I feel like is, is pretty strong. And then I'm painting right over the top of the tomato, right over the top of the red that we've already applied. Now we're also kind of considering the brush strokes that we're making here too. We want the brush strokes are also going to influence the illusion of form too. So I know I've made a lot of haphazard brush strokes here, kind of crisscrossing back and forth, but now I'm going to go back and kind of allow those brush strokes to flow, kind of pull the paint so that they flow over the form of the tomato. So uh, we're thinking basically about the cross contour lines. Even a little bit of highlight on this side. And of course, we've got some light. It's kind of filtering through there, too. And whenever we put a lighter value next to a darker value, it makes the darker value appear even darker, and vice versa. And we're going to progressively get stronger, just like we've done throughout the painting. And you see how strong that is when I initially put it down? Wipe off the brush. 
and just kind of work it around here. Wow, some of that wet paint on the surface to mix in a little bit. And that's the great thing about oil paints. Once we've got some of the color on the surface, we can go back and just work it. And what's interesting, I don't know if you can tell this on the feed or not, but the reds that we have on here are, are fairly strong. It might be hard to see it on the feed and, and really tell how strong they are. Let me uh, close the palette out for a second and see if that makes them appear a little bit uh, stronger the way that I'm seeing them. But uh, the reds on here are fairly strong. Um, and as a result, the the branches or the, the stem already is kind of getting a little bit of a green hue associated with it, even though there's no green on here at all, which is interesting. Um, and color can kind of have that effect on you sometimes. And it feels like that's happening already, which is promising, which means that the greens that we put on here are really, really going to pop and really, really stand out. And now, I said it before during the series, but I'll say it again. <laughs> and that is, remember why you are doing this. Uh, why you are doing it. <laughs> Don't get so caught up in uh, trying to make it look too perfect um, with every stroke that you make. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to continue to alter this as we go. So the most important thing to keep in mind is to have fun. This is supposed to be fun. This should be somewhat of a relaxing endeavor. You now, you might notice I'm kind of going outside of the edges of the tomato. I'm not really worried about the edges at this point. Uh, we're going to clean those up when we do some work to the background and, of course, the areas of cast shadow. All right, uh, so I got quite a bit of titanium white here on the brush and uh, just a touch of the yellow ochre here with the red. And this might be a little bit too strong there, so I'll wipe a little bit off. I want to gradually build up this highlighted area around the side. I don't want to make it too strong because it's not too strong. And now this is cadmium red with just a touch of the yellow ochre. And we can go ahead and this again, this is just a light, light application. We're just getting some color in place. And what will happen is you'll find that your perception of the colors that you have on the surface might change a little bit. And you might see as I get close to the edge, I'm kind of taking the brush and kind of working the, the fibers of the brush into the edge. That's almost scrubbing it. That's a really easy way to kind of create an edge. All right, now let's go back over here and we'll just start filling in the shadow here with this color. And I'm gonna try to be real careful. And remember, we can make adjustments to this. If, if this appears too dark, we can always lighten it back up. It's real easy to get impatient. <laughs> and it's real easy to get frustrated too. Especially when you put down the color and it doesn't immediately work the way you, you thought it was going to. And of course, doing this with the smaller brush. And you can get as detailed as you want with this or as not detailed as you wish. And again, I'm just going to try to get some color on the surface to begin with and then we'll work the values back and forth. And if this brush proves to be too big and I lose a little bit of control, I'll switch over to the smaller round brush. Just like we did with the tomatoes, we're just kind of getting our base color in place and then we'll alter the values. 
we can kind of work on the edges too as we go. Since I added a little bit more of the, since I developed the shadow a little bit more earlier today, that paint is still wet around the edges, which is what we want really because we want to soften up the edges as I mentioned before. And we need to have the connection points to be a little bit wet so that we can kind of smooth that edge. Uh, color here closer to the center. You can see right underneath the uh, stem here, it's a lot warmer and a lot lighter in value. So we're going to dress this just like we did the darker values. I'm going to put the color down first and then while it's wet, I'm going to work it around and blend it. Add a little bit of variation in the in the flesh of the tomato. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the alizarin crimson here, and I'm just gonna pull a little bit of it over here to make that shadow shape right up here a little bit stronger. We'll refine it with a darker, darker mixture in just a moment, but. And let's create the impression of a little bit of an imperfection here. And then, of course, every time that we make marks on the surface, not not every second, but every few minutes we make a mark uh, or a series of marks, we should look at it in totality and compare it with what we've got already in place and just make sure that it makes sense. Make sure that the highlights are consistent. Make sure that the shape of the tomato is consistent with the other ones and the shadows and the positions of the, the highlights and the shadows are consistent with everything else. And um, you should be doing that constantly throughout your painting. We're not gonna worry about the lighter values and midtones right yet. We're going to come back and address those in a moment. We're kind of starting with the darker values. And then we're going to work our way to the lighter values. And I'm purposely covering more area with the darker shadow than we actually need. Because I'm going to go back with the lighter values in a minute. So remember, this is going to be kind of our middle value. We're going to go back with a lighter value in just a minute. So if you're looking at this and saying, well, that's not light enough, that's good. You're right. <laughs> it's not light enough. Again, we're just kind of making a pass with the midtones. And it may still look pretty dark overall, but in just a minute we'll, we'll be able to go back and really push some of those lighter values and things should really start to pop at that point. Just creating a little bit of a transition there. And then we'll go back and continue lightening, lighting, lightening up. <laughs> That's hard to say. The areas where light is hitting the stems and things. I'll just call them the end things. And of course you can make whatever kind of brush strokes you want. <laughs> if you want to scrub them on, you can do that. But sometimes you get a little bit of a better, better stroke if you try to make it one deliberate. But like I said, at some point you have to say, okay, we are done. And you know what? I believe we're at that point. If you're ready to learn more about drawing and painting, then check out our comprehensive membership program, which includes video courses, weekly live lessons, ebooks, lesson plans for teachers, and much, much more. To learn more about our program, just click on the card in the upper right hand corner or visit thevirtualinstructor.com forward slash members today. And if you'd like to check out three of our course modules for free, you can do so by joining our mailing list. Just click on the link you see here on your screen. 
You'll get access to three of our course modules, which includes videos and eBooks, and of course you'll get updates when new lessons are posted on the website. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching.